that include this license plate system. So um, I'm trying to figure out why we need it. Why do we need it? Why do we need it? You know, what, what, it what is it and why do we need it? It's a mobile license plate reading system. What it is is there's three to four infrared cameras that are mounted on uh, the police vehicle. They're mounted on the roof and also on the fenders. What, what it does is it officer drives the vehicle down the road. It scans the license plates of cars parked at the curb, cars that pass it on the roadway, cars that are going the opposite direction, uh, and it runs those license plates through uh, a database. Uh, the biggest one being the people who haven't paid our parking tickets. And what it allows us to do is say, hey, that car's got six unpaid parking tickets on it and somebody's in it right now. So then we pull the car over and we serve the warrants on the operator. And sometimes the operator might have guns, drugs, no insurance, unregistered vehicle. It, uh, it It's a force multiplier, if, if I could say. It allows us to work more efficiently. Uh, we put we got one as a demo from a, a company, and we put it out for four or five details, and we averaged five to $7,000 in revenue in four hours of time, and about 18 people arrested when we put them out there. Literally, the system paid for itself within five details. <laughs> And uh, that's basically what it does. It will allow us, I feel, to clean up a lot of our uh, outstanding unpaid parking tickets. And in, in the grand scheme of things, uh, I, I can probably show you empirically by June of next year that it was revenue neutral, if not a, a money-making mind item for the city. And uh, it's just going to allow us to work smarter and generate more revenue from the police department for the city. Did the other city have it? Did, uh, did we, uh, you know, if we have other cities? Yeah, we're not the it? first one. This is not like, <laughs> I don't want, I, I will not say that which shall not be named, but <laughs> it's nothing like that. These systems are in use all over the country. And, uh, I mean, they're so effective that a lot of auto recovery companies that go around and repo cars, they have people, they hire them in large cities just to drive around. And then they mine the date at the end of the day, and they say, hey, where did you see that tag at? And they'll give you an address, and then they'll go and repo the car. So I, they're, they're, we're not looking to do anything like that with them. I'm just saying they're, they're a very effective technology system. And really, I, I, like a council president, I, I can assure you that I will, they will pay for themselves in, in the first year, and they will be generating revenue for years to come for the city. Yeah, I'm, then, I'm a little less concerned about that than whether they help us fight crime. As, as I mentioned to you before the meeting, it, it appears to me in my uh, cursory look at our crime statistics um, <clears throat> for the last four months um, that they are down from last year. Our arrest rates are down from last year. And, and the year before um, for non-traffic related crimes. And so I'm concerned about if, if this is really to a money maker for the city, how does it help us do our core mission, which, which is to fight crime and make this a safer place? It'll do that in a variety of ways. Uh, most importantly, like I said, it'll it'll give officers a probable cause to stop a vehicle, especially in some of our neighborhoods. If we know that there's a warrant for the operator of the motor vehicle, the owner of the oper you know the owner of the motor vehicle, you pull the car over, and uh, sometimes good criminal arrests come from that information. Uh, such as uh, you, they'll make a plain view arrest, they'll see guns, drugs. And when they pull the vehicle over, uh, they'll pull the vehicle over. It will be the operator. They'll pull them out to serve the warrants on them. Search incident to arrest will turn up guns or drugs. Uh, the other thing they do is they store for 30 days 
license plate numbers. So it'll allow us, say we have a homicide at Princess and West or Queen and Princess, just pick an intersection. We can go back and look and say, okay, uh, what cars were parked at that intersection at that time of day two weeks ago or at the time of the homicide? Did it, did it, prior to the homicide, did a patrol vehicle go down that street, which has frequently happened? Mm -hmm. I mean, I've driven down the street and the gunshots have been going off. My, I've watched them in the rearview mirror already. Uh, we can tell you what cars were parked there. So <clears throat> there's, there's the, the information, the intelligent aspects of it, and there's also the ability to get good probable cause to pull over drug cars in high crime areas, and there's a reasonable probability that a certain percentage of those we're gonna we're gonna arrest people for guns and or drugs on those vehicle stops. So, I mean, I called uh, Officer Anderson. He just walked in the room. He was the guy that actually did all the. Uh, uh, legwork, he, the information gathering, and, we, and he actually orchestrated the the uh, warrant details with these license plate reader system that we had to demo. And if I mean, if you'd like to query him, I'm sure he could tell you about because he said he, I just asked him. He said, "Well, we impounded some cars, and we got some guns, we got some drugs, and we averaged five to seven thousand dollars in revenue and about eighteen people." And that's in a four hour detail, so it's not. So, how many of these would there be? How, how there would be two systems. Okay, so only two cars would be able to have these yes. cameras. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So who would? How do you determine which cars and where they would be? Are you targeting specific areas where they're going to be? Is it just at any time, all three shifts, once a day? With how's how's that going to work? We haven't really discussed it. I believe the chief's plan is to just have them out there for regular patrol because what we want is the intelligence as much as we want the revenue. We want to know if there's a shooting at Princess and West, which cars were parked there 15 minutes prior to that and why they're not there now. <laughs> okay. Uh, now, there will be targeted details. If we get extra people on a Friday night, we might put both of them out because, and I think, like I said, I can have uh, Officer Anderson speak to this. Uh, they would put the reader out and then they'd have a car or three or four officers with the van behind them because they were literally pulling people over so fast that they were filling up the, the police van. They ran out of... Uh, they didn't have enough officers to arrest the people that needed arrested for their outstanding fines. Uh, there will be details like that, but as far as I'd, I think... And I can, like I said, I can ask Officer Anderson to speak to you about this. I don't even think they picked it. They just went out and started driving. They'd go down King Street, leave City Hall, and just go down King Street. Literally, till they got to George, the system had gone off twice already. <laughs> and that was just leaving City Hall. But an officer driving a patrol vehicle doesn't have, well, first of all, it's a distraction to be sitting over running, typing license plates into the county mobile data terminal to, to see if it's wanted, you know, if there's any outstanding fines or stuff like that. It's, it's a hazard. This thing does it automatically, and then it just sounds off a, an alert if it has something that you set the parameters for. You can set it for only ha more than one warrant, like, you know, you, so you're not hassling some guy because he missed his whatever. Um, so well, we, we just heard in the public comment section, I don't know if you were here, but we just heard from uh, homeowners who are getting tickets left and right that they, I think, shouldn't be getting. And they were describing their travail over that. And so uh, I don't know if this is even worse, that, that there's no judgment in this tool. But maybe Officer Anderson can. Well, I think that that's all the investigation right now on that case. The gentleman, maybe we should hear both the side of the story. I don't know what happened, but I don't think, uh, but I, I don't think, uh, uh, Captain, that uh, sometimes we should not give it too much information, how it's set up, what it does, and all those things. Uh, it's a kind of thing that uh, you want to keep a secret, and, uh, and because that's part of the job, is, uh, it's a kind of surprise type of thing. So we have to be careful how much we really say publicly, am I right? No. 
No, stay there. I, I want to call up Mr. Gomez, who who started to stand up a few minutes ago. Would you like to uh, raise any <clears throat> points for our consideration? Thank you, Madam Chair. Appreciate the discussion. First of all, right off the bat, I'd like to say I would love for this to go to committee because I do think that it should be afforded that sort of comprehensive uh, discussion. Much of it has started now. And what hasn't been relayed is that part of the key component with regards to these devices and how they're implemented and deployed is the intelligence gathering. These don't just take a picture of a vehicle. They also record the location of where that vehicle is when it takes the picture. So it records the GPS coordinates of the vehicle at that time. And these devices have the ability to scan upwards of 1,000 uh, vehicle tags per minute. So as they're patrolling the streets and scanning vehicles, you're sitting on this mountain of data. What are you going to do with it? And part of what I would like to see done is we create safeguards and parameters for how these devices are used, how the data is retained. One key question, and this is very uh, uh, important. Now listen up here. In other cities, the data has been collected, stored, cataloged, and then shared with other agencies and also private businesses. One key, key element that I want put in place, if nothing else, we need assurances to what will be done with the data. Will you sell it to, will you sell it to private companies again in search of revenue? Because if all we're after is revenue, I mean, I tell you, I can come up with some pretty lofty ideas. They're draconian. I tell you, there's a lot of ways you can drum up revenue, but is that we're going to be blindsided and have that tunnel vision and look only towards dollar signs. We also should have a say in what type of community we want to live in. Do you want to live in a community where the police now have these devices and they have the ability to assume everybody's guilty until proven innocent, which is the transverse of what this country is really about and has been traditionally? So by virtue of it being automatic, that's exactly what it's going to be. And I'm sitting here shocked because even our law enforcement, as they speak, say, we're going to get guns, we're going to get drugs. Guys, you're scanning upwards of 1,000 license plates per, per minute. How many of those do you think are going to come up innocent? How does the community challenge an inaccuracy is another question. Also, what databases will you be matching your hits against? It's another question that we need answers to. Because it could be Amber Alerts, it could be library fees, as has been done in other municipalities. It could be uh, sewer fees, municipal fees, whatever they want to match it against. It could be an erroneous database. Should we all remember now? Is it a good time to cite the International Terrorism Research and Response scandal, which had our own Pennsylvania Governor Rendell come out and be shamed? for contracting with a company who compiled data and records on citizens engaged in peaceful, uh, uh, innocent activities, activists and the like. <clears throat> this is what we need to safeguard against when you implement these systems. And again, Chief Cayley said, if you have nothing to hide, then you have nothing to worry about. Well, I'd like to second that and flip it and engage in a little reciprocity here. If law enforcement has nothing to hide and the intentions are indeed transparent and benevolent, then I think we should roll this over into a committee meeting where we can present uh, uh, our uh, recommendations for how we can implement safeguards, have a cordial discussion, and I believe we can reach a mutual accord. Granted, don't misconstrue. I do not want to see these devices implemented in the city. But again, if they would like to uh, at least address some of the issues, what databases can they assure us they're going to match them against? And I would like city council hammer them down on that. I would also like periodic audits to make sure that the system is functioning as prescribed. I mean, this is powerful technology. Nothing to be feared, but again, we should have a control on the technology rather than have the technology run us. Thank you. Michael? Um, I agree with Mr. Gomez that this should, this, that a policy directing the use of this tool uh, should be established. I am not opposed to the use of the tool as you are, but um, I think it makes sense to to refer this piece of it to committee to talk about these very issues. I mean, it's fascinating to hear you say what the 
what the benefits might be. And again, I am less interested in it as a money maker than as a crime fighter. I, um, I, Council President, we, we really wanted to fight crime. We know that we got to get it passed the money people in the city. So we, we I mean, we, we, we will highlight the revenue generating thing us. to get a yes vote. But I really, know. we wanted to fight crime. We want to. Yeah. We want to get guns and drugs off the streets, and right. that's what I under, our I under, I, and recover I stolen vehicles you. and serve warrants on wanted felons. Right. That's what we want them for. But that was even before you spoke. <laughs> my question to myself was: Is this just to go out and get parking uh, scoff laws? So that we can get more money in the No, but the coffers. parking scoff laws will pay for it. Um, but uh, if there is interest, uh, I will ask if there's interest on council on in referring not this whole piece. I, I, I will recommend a, an amendment to this ordinance so that the, the other transfers can take place. Um, and then sending the subject to... And the next couple of items all to uh, police committee to have a discussion about how this might be used and how it might be, what limits might be placed on it. Um, as far as I know, the police department that I know, at least the, the chief and you, have been willing to I, I engage think in those discussions with the public. That's entirely reasonable, and I understand everybody's civil liberty concerns because... I understand that. Uh, you know, I can tell you, we have no interest in sharing the information with recovery <laughs> services. Okay, like I said, but... Uh, well, it is something that could become a policy that could be adopted by by council and then could be monitored, as Mr. Gomez suggests. Um, so uh, I will I will make this uh, this motion and see if anybody wants to second it. And that is that we remove from this ordinance, Bill Number 28, uh, the last two items, line 5500390910, 10157, and uh, the same number except the middle number is 46120. These two items that we delete those from this ordinance that will allow us then to vote on the remainder of it. Second. So that's a motion. Second. Is there a second? Oh, we perhaps have had enough discussion and we can, uh, is there discussion of the um, motion? All right, then um, will the clerk call the roll please on the um, amendment? Nelson? Yes. Hill Evans? Yes. Nixon? No. Smith? No. Ray? Yes. Okay, the ayes have it. We will pull from this ordinance those two items.